Um, it stopped. Day to day life stopped for quite some time. Wow, it changed drastically. There was no more live performance for me anyway. And, uh, um, that ended. And uh, being at the bottom of the um, pole like I am, I need to be out there to try to put my name out there. So that was probably the worst part for me in 2020. Well, my day-to-day -day life changed because of the pandemic, but it also changed because I was not working for a while. So instead of going to work every day, working eight to 10 hours every day um, during the day, I was home during the day. Hi, my name is Alex Reyes, and I'm the creator of 2020 in Memphis. Thanks for watching. Like you, towards the end of 2020, I realized what a traumatic year it had been. I am also a storyteller, and I believe in the healing power of stories. So I set out to collect the stories of 2020, the good, the bad, the painful, and the unlikely. This is the result. These are real people, and these are their stories. Well, um, a lot, you know, I, I, I work my whole life since I'm 14, 15 years old with my father. I like to, uh, look forward to getting up and having a purpose in life and getting up and going out and doing things. And, um, at least for the last uh, almost a full year, um, just uncertainty of how I'm going to take care of my family and my, uh, my personal view on things and the stress level on a daily basis that we have to deal with is crushing. Um, you know, the unknown, I've never had such an unknown in my life. I've always been able to go out and work and provide for my family uh, very, very difficult, wondering what's going to happen with my job if I might just totally be laid off and they won't hire me again. Um, it's a struggle on a daily basis, mentally, physically, spiritually, um, just to, to stay positive and try to move forward. Very difficult. Besides wearing these masks all the time and, you know, a lot of people being more cautious about where they go, it just, it just don't seem real to me, you know, seeing everybody in their mask and, you know, all the deaths that's happened. It just don't seem real. Um, I feel like um, I'm a little bit more paranoid about, like, getting sick and, like, wearing a mask, like, whenever I go out. And, I mean, like, I've seen a meme about this. It's like, people that are just like, oh, I grab my keys and my phone and I got to be like, oh, got to grab my mask, too. And like how every, well, most places, like everybody wears masks. So like, you don't have that like smile. Like when you see people in public, you know, you smile at them. But since you're wearing a mask, that kind of eliminates that whole like smile thing. Wow. It changed drastically. There was no more live performance for me anyway. You know, um, that ended. And uh, being at the bottom of the um, pole like I am, I need to be out there to try to put my name out there. So. That was probably the worst part for me in 2020. Um, it, the financial hits, like everybody else, we all take a financial hit on that. Um, it slowed much slowed down where I wanted to be. Yeah, that's about it, pretty much. Gotcha. And I didn't lose anybody. Yeah, I didn't lose anybody to Corona. I've only known maybe about two people ever that even got it. To be honest with you, out of a lot of people I know, I don't know too many people at all, just two that said they got it. And they were good within about five days at, at max. I think professionally, first and foremost, it changed very dramatically um, um, in March. I remember very distinctly when COVID started. I was actually um, 
typically Tuesdays through Thursdays, I was traveling central and western Wisconsin. And I remember those last couple appointments and last couple days in, in a hotel. And um, really, um, sort of overnight professionally, things really changed because you didn't have uh, the accessibility to people, you didn't have the ability to uh, see people in person. So, you know, professionally, I think that's pretty straightforward. I think personally, of course, it changed dramatically too, because once that, um, that switch was flipped, you know, all the people that we're close to, all the people that, you know, just the routine things that are a part of your day, they're part of my day and every day, you know, meeting people on Friday for fish, going, you know, meeting people for a drink. Um, all the, again, um, business functions obviously dried up and they and truly have still not come back. Um, all the things that are part of the fabric of my life. Uh, one, you know, kind of like we talked about before, that was personally very difficult is it, uh, it put a kibosh on all the volunteer things that you look forward to the, you know, the cancer walks, the group events, um, you know, and that's, that's, that's a tough thing. And that also had, as it has in so many other areas, just a devastating um, effect for them in terms of fundraising. So, um, you know, a whole host of things sort of, sort of clicked right in and, you know, we're still fighting past those. Well, my day-to-day -day life changed because of the pandemic, but it also changed because I was not working for a while. So instead of going to work every day, working eight to 10 hours every day um, during the day, I was home during the day. Um, to adapt to that, I started doing a few things in addition to looking for jobs. I started doing a read aloud program for kids. Initially it was five days a week um, where I would get on Zoom every day and read books and started a, a following for, for young people to listen to books that I was reading. Um, I changed, um, I, I stopped going to hear live music, which was a huge part of my life. Before the pandemic hit, I'd go hear live music in Appleton and the Fox Cities, sometimes as much as six days a week. Um, every night I was out listening to live music um, and I stopped doing that. You know, at the, at the low week would be two or three times that I would go hear live music. And that came to a complete halt for months in there. So to adapt to that, I started listening to online, um, online Facebook live concerts several times a week um, and really making connections through, through that too. Not just, it's not just watching it, but talking to people, chatting, talking to the artists who were performing um, and then spending a lot more time with my wife was a big, um, change from pre-pandemic to real well. My day life has changed through 2020 with meals. I suddenly make so many meals. I never did this before. I have two kids. My And, you know, before pandemic, my husband was never around. He was traveling or came home super late. And my kids were in all different activities, running from soccer to field hockey to now we eat dinner together. We sometimes have lunch together and sometimes have breakfast together. And I make tons of meals. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> How has your day to day life changed through 2020? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just my day to day life is is, is the meal maker. I'm just always cooking. Um, and also uh, finding a way to make the most of my home. So like having a schedule within the home instead of like running out everywhere and kind of, um, yeah, and, and embracing the time with my family. Whereas before, like I spent so much time uh, running running my kids around to play different places and carpooling and activities and it was exhausting. I find myself a lot slower now just in I 
slowed down. That's my day-to-day life. I've slowed down because we're not running. We're settled into our family routine and the external forces. <laughs> um, nothing's, nothing's, no one's telling us to run anywhere multiple times in so many ways because 2020 was already going to be a year of transition for me um i was graduating from graduate school and i was living in new york city at the start of the pandemic and and had to figure out um you know moving out of the city and um making my next moves in my life um so so my life has changed a lot from the beginning in the beginning um, in the beginning of the pandemic, the biggest changes I felt were a lot of alone time, so much alone time. I was living by myself in New York City, um, and I just was not used to not being able to be around people. Um, I was working uh, for um, a college as a residence hall, um, the head of a residence hall, and so I was so used to there being, you know, students and people around me 24-7. And so everything emptied out really fast and I was alone. So that was a big change in the beginning. Since then, um, the way I've transitioned, I've been able to be surrounded by a few more people. Um, I've been able to spend time with my family because I moved back in with my parents for a bit. And so um, that helped a little bit, but life, just day-to-day -day life definitely feels different. A, because of, everything comes with anxiety now, right? Like I'm someone who already struggled with anxiety, but now the simplest little things um, bring up a lot of those anxious tics um, and ruminating thoughts um, and worries about, am I gonna bring home germs to my family? Am I going to this, that, and whatever? Um, what is the safest way to do this? So that's one of the biggest changes. And then I think the other big change of my entire connection to the world being on my computer and on my phone. Um, that's been a big change for me and it's been something I've had trouble adjusting to, so, yeah. Um, it stopped. Day-to-day -day life stopped for quite some time. Um, it turned into, um, it turned into feeling like nothingness every day because you can't do a lot of stuff anymore unless you frequent clubs and bars, in which I do not. And that's occasional and grateful to come when they do. But I generally stay home because I have to be the smart parent. I'm a single, I singly raise my ch children. So their dad is an over the road truck driver and is here when he can be. Um, it has changed my day-to-day -day functioning and I am bored with some cooking things anymore. There's not any fun in um, hoping for things that could be, but they can't be because people are making all of these mistakes everywhere. And behaviors are are causing everyone to have to suffer. So trying to just think about tomorrow, not necessarily worry about it too much, but think about tomorrow as Okay, so if this happens tomorrow, <laughs> what do I do? So it just doesn't um, doesn't always pan out for today, but at least knowing there isn't anything else that there can't possibly some, be something else to worry about that tomorrow um, turns into being, um, there's only one thing that can change, possibly. I mean, out of anything, there's only ever one thing that can change day to day, mostly outside of a life circumstance of like death or something like that. So.